Luke 22, verse 47. The Bible says, And while he yet spake, behold, a multitude, and he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? When they which were about him saw what would follow, they said unto him, Lord, shall we smite with the sword? And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. And Jesus answered and said, Suffer ye thus far. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said unto the chief priests and captains of the temple and the elders which were come to him, Be ye come out as against a thief with swords and staves. When I was daily with you in the temple, ye stretched forth no hands against me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. Well, there's a lot right there in that thought, the power of darkness. Let's read on, verse number 54. Then took they him, and led him, and brought him into the high priest's house. And Peter followed afar off. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall, and were sat down together, Peter sat down among them. But a chief maid beheld as he sat by the fire, and earnestly looked upon him, and said, This man was also with him. And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. And after a little while, another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. And about the space of one hour after another confidently affirmed, saying of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately, while he yet spake, the cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto Peter, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. And the men that held Jesus mocked him and smote him. And when they had blindfolded him, they struck him on the face and asked him, saying, Prophesy, who smote thee? Any other things blasphemously spake they against him. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, for good singing. We thank you for the good testimonies. We thank you to be able to come to the house of God tonight. Lord, Brother Jack was on his way, and then there was a tree across the road and couldn't make it, and others were providentially hindered, and some are sick. And, but, Lord, we're glad to be able to be here tonight. Lord, as we come, we come empty-handed, nothing to offer you but tattered garments. But, Lord, we come giving you unreservedly the best that we do have. Lord, seeking to worship you in spirit and in truth. Now, Father, I pray that, Lord, you would certainly sit down amongst us and help us from the scriptures tonight. Lord, we're needy people. We live in a destitute time. We live in perilous times. We live in dark hours. And Lord, it's seemingly the power of darkness is all around us. And so, Lord, we're asking for you to uh, pervade the darkness and God show up and help us, strengthen us, that, Lord, we might go forth from this place, a vessel that, Lord, brings honor and glory to you. Uh, Father, meet every need of every heart here tonight, and God certainly... Uh, help us to uh, comprehend the goodness of God. Lord, we bless you. We praise you for all the great things you've done. Thank you for Calvary. Thank you for the Word of God. Thank you for an empty tomb. Thank you for a risen Savior seated at the right hand, ever living to make intercession tonight. Thank you, Lord, for being the great God of glory and for being our God. Thank you for a good church to come to. Thank you for all the work that's been done around here. Thank you, Father, for just being a great God. Bless now. Bless your people. Many of them are tired. They've worked hard. They've labored this week. The heat's been unbearable. And God, I pray you'd bless them for being in the house of God. Now, have your will and way now, Father. Use this unworthy vessel. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I, I, 
Uh, I want you to just get an overview of what is transpiring here. We find that Jesus is betrayed in these verses. Now, he had foretold of his betrayal just a few hours before. He had told them that one of them that uh, was at dinner with them would betray him. And Judas sold him for 30 pieces of silver. And we see the fruition of the prophecy when he comes and kisses him on the cheek and they came to betray him. And of course, uh, Peter uh, whipped out a sword, cut off Malchus's ear, and then the Lord Jesus uh, put his ear back on. I don't know how you arrest a man that just uh, uh, picks up an ear and puts it on the guy's head and it's healed. I, 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 I'm just walking away from right there. I, I just don't understand that. Uh, I believe it's Matthew's account said that when they asked him if he was Jesus, he said, I am, and they all fell down under the power of God uh, when he announced who he was. Uh, I don't know how you get up after the, the man announces who he is and it knocks you on your keister uh, and you get up and you arrest him. I just don't understand that uh, other than to say uh, the last clause of verse 53, the power of darkness. Uh, never underestimate uh, how much power evil has behind it. Uh, and can I say, uh, evil men are waxing worse and worse. Uh, they'll manipulate and say and do anything to have their way. Uh, we see Jesus' betrayal. We also see his belittling. Three times Peter den denies him. Peter's bold enough to take an ear off of a guy that comes to arrest him, but he's mm, too chicken to even stand up and say that he knows him just a few minutes later. He belittles the Lord. Um, but don't look down your nose too far, Peter. How many times are we in a public arena and somebody asks us something about the Lord and we don't stand up and proclaim the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ? God help us not to belittle Him in our lives. And then we see His buffeting in verses 63 and 64 as they beat Him. They blindfolded Him, said, prophesy who it is that hit you. Well, he knew who was hitting him, uh, but they buffeted him. And uh, It just absolutely blows my mind that the great God of glory would even come into this world, but that he would come into this world and allow the ones he created to beat him. But you have to understand why he did. See, he saw something in you and I worth saving. He saw something in you and I worth indwelling. He chose to move into us and live in us. He saw something in us worth taking the glory. He saw something in us worth allowing us to be part of the family of God and marrying us into the family of God. He saw something in us worth taking every punch. Hmm? I say, oh, what a Savior. But I want you to think about this evening. Put your mind with what is transpiring. They're in a garden. Jesus is arrested. There's much chaos. The disciples begin to disperse. Jesus is hauled off into the chief priest's house. Peter begins to sit down and warm among the devil's fire and he begins to deny the Lord and then the Lord is beaten and he's blasphemed. Uh, can I say that this very night is the culmination of depravity? Look at verse 65. And many other things blasphemously spake they against him. Can there be any lower point in human history than when the creator is blasphemed by the creation when the very holy one of glory is treated worse than a common criminal you realize when he told the chief priest and the elders that they didn't say anything when he met with them daily in the temple but they came to him at night you realize they're breaking the law arresting him at night. That's how low depravity had stooped. And yet, 
the Creator allowed it to happen. We see the culmination of depravity, but notice the Creator's discipline. Look in verse 42. Saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Jesus already determined he was going to allow it to happen. He was disciplined to see it through. Had he not, there'd been no hope for us. We see the culmination of depravity. We see the Creator's discipline, but notice the celebration of the damned. Can I say that Jesus is in custody? Hell's having a time. Can I say that Judas was counting his silver? Hell's having a time. Can I say that Peter's cussing? Cussing the Lord. Hell's having a time. How much mileage do you think that Satan had on Peter from the days going forward? Every time that Peter would stand up to do something from the Lord, you know the devil's right there. Remember when you was cussing him? Hmm? So when you read First and Second Peter, and Peter talks about the good grace of God, he knows what he's talking about. So we see this evening displayed in the Scriptures. And I want you to think about our day. It's been over 100 years since there's been true revival in America. It's been 40 years since the great campaigns when dozens and dozens of people would be saved in churches. We're experiencing the Bible unfolding, Brother Bob, right before our eyes when they say there'd be a great falling away. When iniquity would abound and the love of many would wax cold. Did not Jesus say that's how the world would know we were his disciples, that we'd have love one for another? But yet love is waxing colder and colder. Where things are happening in the streets of America, a country that was founded upon the word of God that is so wicked and so evil and it's embraced and the very fulfillment of the scriptures that those that would do evil are called good and those that do good are called evil. And I say that we're seeing the culmination of depravity again in our day. So this is what kind of what I want to preach on. And looking at what was happening that night and looking at how bleak it is in our day I don't preach on when things look bad I mean if you are Peter, James, John Matthew, Mark, Luke you're Titus or one of the other disciples and you've seen all that transpire that night you wouldn't say this is a good day and friend, if you're honest and you look around the climate of this world, it's not a good day. Things look bad. I mean, let's be honest. We've got a great church and we get excited to get to come to church, but really, how much God do we see in this world? We see a whole lot more darkness than we see light, do we not? Isn't it just a relief to get to come and hear singing and testimonies and a portion of the scriptures and get our minds off of the darkness for a little while? Do we really come with an expectation that the power of God's going to fall in here and we're going to see great revival break out? Honestly, we don't. I long for that. But we really cannot expect that. I remember as a young man when you came to church expecting that. Why? Because things look bad. I mean, they do, do they not? Now, we know the scriptures. 
We know the Bible says, Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. We know the scriptures. We know that nothing is impossible with God. Uh, we know the scriptures. If God be for us, who can be against us? Uh, uh, we know the scriptures. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can th ask or think. Uh, we know the scriptures. Uh, Call unto me, and I'll answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things that thou knowest not. Uh, we know them, but we don't experience them. Amen. Has God changed? No. Was Jesus not God manifest in the flesh? Yet, that all transpired in Luke 22 in the very will of God. And everything that is transpiring today is happening as according to the will of God. So what about when things look bad? Can I say, first of all, when things look bad, take refuge, heaven is up to something. Huh? Hey, uh, on the surface, this looked real bad. Can, can I say, uh, in glory, the Father and the Holy Ghost were saying, just about time. Everything's uh, happening just as we laid it out back before the foundation of the world. Uh, can I say heaven was up to something? Uh, and can I say uh, it may look black, bad and it may look bleak and we may not see great revival transpiring uh, and we might not see droves of them coming down the altars to get saved. Uh, but I've got good news, heaven's up to something. Uh, hey, uh, uh, the Father's telling Gabriel to polish up the horn. Uh, hey, uh, 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 they're getting a red carpet uh, ready to roll out. Uh, hey, uh, everything's lining up. Up, uh, and heaven is up to something tonight. Uh, you may not understand it, and I may not understand it, but take refuge in the fact. Things look bad. Heaven's not worried. Huh? Heaven wasn't worried that night, and heaven's not worried tonight. Heaven's up to something. Say, what are they up to? I don't know, but they're up to something. Huh? I can take refuge in that. Hey, nothing's ever occurred to God. Uh, God's not wringing His hands. Uh, God's not worried about a thing. Uh, God's got everything lined out in heaven's getting ready uh, for what's about to transpire. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I say thank the Lord. Mm -mm. Can I say this? When things look bad, heaven's up to something. But can I say secondly, when things look bad, hope lies just ahead. They didn't understand it that night, but what they exact what, what exactly they needed was transpiring. Jesus had to be taken. Jesus was about ready to go to the cross of Calvary. Jesus was about ready to be. Everything had to transpire in that order for their benefit, friends. Uh, hope lies ahead. They didn't understand it. We don't understand what's going on in this world. I don't understand why mashed potato brains is in the office. I don't understand uh, 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 how we go from a dollar sixty-seven for gas uh, uh, to five dollars a gallon. Uh, 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 I don't understand uh, 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 all. I, I, I do understand. Uh, they've got to break the economy of America. There's no way America will ever buy into a one-world government. No way America will ever submit to the Antichrist while America's strong. Uh, and, and so they have to break America. I understand what is real going on but I don't know how we got to hear this quick yeah, right. only to say that hope lies ahead yeah. uh, and it's not in the Republicans it's not in the Democrats right. and it's not in the Tea Party and it's not in the Liberty, Libertines and anybody else uh, our hope comes from above my dear right. friends uh, can I say uh, hope lies just ahead right. see the sacrifice for sins was just about to be offered that night Mm. Had there been no sacrifice for sins, uh, none of them nor none of us would got to go to heaven. Right, right. Uh, hope lies just ahead. It looked bad, but hey, something good was really happening. Huh? Can I say uh, the stone was going to be rolled back from the sepulcher? Uh, hey, we sing about it. Uh, we rejoice in the fact we're not serving a dead Jew. We're serving a risen Savior. Uh, hey, but it hadn't happened yet that night. Uh, and listen, uh, in the ages to come, uh, they're going to talk about the night the trumpet sound uh, and the dead in Christ rise uh, and we which were alive and remain 
rain arose uh, and we uh, met the Lord and we was ever with him, uh, we'll talk about it because we'll experience it just lies right ahead. Uh, see, they didn't know about that stone being rolled. Had that stone not rolled back, we wouldn't have any hope beyond the grave. Hope lies just ahead. They didn't understand it. The sacrifice for sins was to be offered. The stone was going to be rolled back from the sepulcher. And salvation by grace through faith was available to all. Amen. Do you realize that night there was no hope for anybody in this building? Even had Jesus died and rose again but didn't graft in a branch for Gentiles, there'd been no hope for us. Amen. But you see, hope lied just ahead. He was going to taste death for every man. And he was going to make a way that sinners could be saved by grace through faith. You didn't have to uh, keep the law. You didn't have to earn it. You didn't have to offer up sacrifice. He was the sacrifice. Uh, you just had to put your faith uh, in the finished works of what God did for fallen man. Uh, and when you believed on the Lord, he saved you forever, ever, ever more. Hmm? I don't know what just lies ahead. I've just got faith that God's got it all under control. Amen. And I believe he's got enough grace to take us home. Yeah, right. It's always been a way of grace, and it always will be. Thank God for grace. Things look bad, preacher. Well, heaven was up to something. And hope lied just ahead. Can I say this? When things look bad, mark her down, neighbor. Hell will be defeated. Mm. Hell has never once won over God. Amen. Matter of fact, in Genesis 3, 15, that's the first promise uh, that the Savior was coming, uh, and it was a promise to the serpent, uh, and he told the serpent, uh, when he comes, uh, you'll bruise his heel, but he's going to bruise your head. Uh, and the Lord's kicked him in the head every time they confronted since then. Uh, uh, hell has never uh, gained one ounce of ground on the Lord, and it never will, my dear friends. Uh, hell's going to be defeated. Matter of fact, it's going to be defeated so bad it's going to be thrown into the lake of fire. Uh, so it may look like hell's got the upper hand. Just hang on, neighbor. Hell's going to be defeated. Uh, listen, uh, you may have never heard this, but I'm just going to tell it. It wasn't, but I'm going to because it just hit my mind. Uh, you know what transpired? Jesus died and they put him in the tomb and hell was having a party they thought they had him Satan thought they had him read uh, Psalms 22 uh, 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 when Jesus said the bulls of Bashan compassed me uh, uh, I believe every imp of hell was dispatched to Calvary uh, they tried to kill him on the cross uh, uh, brother Charlie if they'd have killed him uh, he wouldn't have been God uh, 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 let me help you something they didn't kill the Lord Jesus uh, he laid down his life and he took it back up uh, uh, but listen uh, hell thought they killed him uh, they thought that they'd done it uh, hey uh, Satan's ready to uh, put on a royal robe and kick open the door of heaven uh, and take over. Uh, they're having a party. Uh, hey, uh, he went into the grave uh, on Wednesday night uh, and hell was having a party. Uh, on Thursday night, hell's uh, having a bigger party. Uh, on Friday night, hell's having a bigger party. Uh, on Saturday night, it's got out of the banks. Uh, but early Sunday morning, uh, there was a knock on hell's door. Uh, 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 one of them says, who is it? Uh, he said, it's me. Uh, he said, who are you? Uh, he said, I am. Uh, and that imp said, uh, Satan, the door's for you. Uh, and Jesus kicked open the doors of hell, uh, walked in, uh, and Satan bowed before him uh, and gave him the keys to death and hell. Uh, and Jesus rose again. Uh, hey, uh, he's always defeated hell, uh, and he always will. Uh, Brother Greg says the uh, devil don't even have the keys to his own house. Uh, right. Amen. It may look like hell's taken over, but friend, I've read the back of the book, we win, and it's not even close. Uh, things are bad, preacher. That's okay. He'll be defeated. Hope lies ahead. Uh, 
Heaven's up to something. But mark her down. Preacher, it looks bad. Mark her down. The hallelujahs are going to roll. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Huh? We walk into Revelation 5, huh? And we walk on them streets of gold uh, and see the Lamb. Uh, and we begin to cry, Hallelujah, worthy is the Lamb. Uh, Revelation 19, three times it says, Hallelujah to the Lamb. Uh, you mark her down. Uh, you may not shout much around here. Uh, we get there. Uh, you're going to let him roll because he is worthy to be praised. When you see him as he is, and you come to the full fruition of knowledge of what he really done for you, you'll shout her out. <laughs> uh, preacher, things look bad. It don't matter. You might as well get practiced up. Uh, well, we're going to shout her out when we get to glory. Think about it. No more sin. No more sickness. No more sorrows. He's going to wipe the tears from her eyes. Uh, no more constraints. No more memories of all the failures and all the shortcomings. It's all going to be gone. Amen. We're going to have a body fashion like his that will not be limited. And we, my dear friends, are going to look around and say, what in the world are we doing here? And we're going to say, hallelujah to the Lamb. I guarantee you. Uh, then I thought about this. Things look bad, preacher. I know they do. Uh, I know they look bad. I mean, I tell you all the time, even the weatherman lies to you. I watched Steve Horsmeyer last night said, go ahead and water your lawns. You're not going to get enough rain to do anything. Lord have mercy. About 430, we had a gully washer. How does he keep his job? Uh, things look bad, preacher. Well, all I can tell you is home is just in sight. Just in sight. Now look, you all know I trap a little bit. And sometimes I get a wild hair and I decide I'm not going to stay over. I'm just going to come home after the last night of the meeting. And there have been some times when I've left... Remember, I left Virginia and had about a seven-hour drive. When I left, it was about 9 o'clock, 9.30, hit the road. And you run well for a while. And then all of a sudden, the lines on the road start crossing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And them rumble strips along the side of the road start singing to you. Y'all been there, haven't you? But you just want to get home. You just want to get home. But there's just something about you coming up, you're seeing mile marker 179. You know, that's my exit. You start seeing the lights of Florence starting to shine in the sky. Huh? And you pull off, and all of a sudden the streets are familiar. Your neighborhood starts popping up. There's nothing like pulling into the house. Are you listening? Amen. It makes the journey worth it. Can I say? It's been a long journey. Things look bad. And sometimes the lines are starting to cross. Things just don't make sense anymore. You're starting to hear some noise, a rumble, and that ain't familiar noise. But just keep pressing on, neighbor. Home's just ahead. It's just ahead. It won't be long. It's just inside. It's going to come into view, and it'll be worth it when you pull into the house. Uh, listen, things look bad. That's all right. I, I've, I've learned that the Lord usually shines the brightest when things look the darkest. Preacher, it looks bad. That's all right. You know that the Bible says God does all things well. Uh, seeing isn't believing. Your, your sight can deceive you. So don't base your faith on what you see. 
base your faith on what God says because he does all things well. And it may look bad, but you're looking from the wrong perspective. There's a passage, I wish I'd looked it up, it's over there in Isaiah. And it talks about the brightness of the storm clouds. Well, I don't know if you went outside this evening when it got real dark. There wasn't any brightness in the storm cloud. It got real dark. What you're looking at from our perspective. But God's thrones in the sides of the north. And if you ask our, 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 our pilot here, there's something about getting in that big plane and flying in a storm, but when you get up above it, it's a whole different view, isn't it? Them dark clouds all of a sudden turn real silvery. They're beautiful. You don't see the lightning in, in the sky. You see the sun in the sky. All the lightning's below you. All the storm's below you. Can I say, uh, uh, our perspective is we tend to see the bad. Uh, we need to start looking at it through the Word of God. Uh, and you'll find out everything's all right in glory. Uh, everything's good above the storm, above the darkness. Uh, friend, the sun is still shining. Uh, it's still going to be all right. Uh, uh, friend, uh, uh, quit looking around uh, and look up uh, looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith uh, you'll find help in the midst of your darkness uh, you'll find strength in the midst of your weakness uh, you'll find there is hope in the Lord Jesus Christ uh, preacher things look bad nah, things are looking like they're right on time to me uh, it's just about time to mm, take our flight and it'll be all right. So I just, in reading the Word of God yesterday and reading that passage, just thought I'd tell you, it may look bad, but it's not bad at all. You just got to get your eyes on Jesus. Baby, tonight, you've been dwelling on the bad. And the Lord just kind of helped you a little bit tonight. Maybe you need to come thank Him and say, Lord, help me to dwell on the good. Uh, help me to dwell on what you're doing. That you're working in the shadows. And that God, you've got something going on and something's happening. Uh, and Lord, help me to be prepared for what's next. Uh, maybe here tonight and you don't know the Lord and the Lord's been speaking to your heart. Why don't tonight you get in? Because friend, I don't know if we got till Sunday. This thing's looking bad down here. The Lord might just call us out of here. Uh, friend, you want to make sure you got that reservation, right? Uh, and if you don't know the Lord, why don't you come? We'll get somebody to take a Bible and show you how you can be saved. Uh, maybe you're here tonight uh, and you're saved, but you just lost the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord's your strength, friend. Maybe you need to come and say, Lord, help me. I need my joy back. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you just want to tell him you love him. Uh, hey, that's what the altar's for tonight. Uh, why don't you come just do business with the Lord? Uh, maybe you just want to come and say, thank you, Lord. Uh, I'm glad we're about out of here. I don't know. Folks are coming. Uh, Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. Miss Renee, come. Uh, 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 let's all stand while folks are coming. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you, Lord. Uh, in the midst of when it looks bad, you're doing a work. Uh, and God, I pray you do a work around here. Maybe somebody needs some help tonight. God, I pray you'd help them. God, I pray for somebody here tonight unsaved. Tonight be the night of their salvation. God, I pray for somebody here tonight, uh, uh, Lord, that's lost the joy of their salvation. They'd get it back. Maybe tonight somebody just needs to come uh, and fall back in love with Jesus. Uh, Lord, whatever the need is, just bless in this invitation. Speak to hearts, get glory, and we'll thank you for it. Help your people realize, Father, that, Lord, things aren't bad at all. It's just all happening according to your timing. And, Lord, we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.